going to poetry. Guess who is the poet of childhood? Marcus Nettel, right? Now, what is the poem about? It is about childhood. It is understood. What about childhood? Now, when you think about childhood, what are the qualities? Innocence, yes. No worries. We start writing. And here in this poem, as the poet talks about losing childhood, what are the things that make him realize that he is no longer a child? First stanza, what does he talk about? When? Is there a particular age of becoming a child? Is there? Which age is mentioned in the poem? When I cease to be? 11, right? So like you cross 11 years, is it that? Then when he talks about hell and heaven, what are hell and heaven? These are places which you have been taught right from your childhood, they exist, right? And we have these two words, hell and heaven used together, they are opposites. The device used is anti -tesis. okay? Right, two opposite words together. Fine, what is it? It is anti -tesis. Here again and again, the poet asks the question, when did my childhood go? When did my childhood go? So what is that called as? Refrain. So when a line is repeated, please note down here, the line repeated in a poem, right? It is a refrain. There is a refrain over here. Yes. Now, in the first stanza, he talks about realizing that there is no hell and heaven. And when you start realizing things, you are able to differentiate the imaginary from the real. You develop a quality of what? Rational thinking. So what is the quality in the first stanza the poet has developed? The quality of, yes, what is it? It is the quality of rational thinking. What is rational thinking? The ability to differentiate between right and wrong, imaginary and real. And how did he develop? What instant taught him? What instant taught him, Suyash? First answer, what is the line over there which makes him realize? What is it? Yes, he could not find hell and heaven could not be found or the geography teacher did not teach about hell and heaven. That is what makes him realize that these places do not exist. Okay, right? And why do you think it is important for him to understand about the loss of his childhood? Do you think he misses being a child? Mm -hmm. Yes. So he's missing his childhood and the qualities that are there when we are children, our innocence, we are careless, you know, we don't have any worries, we are unburdened. We have, uh, yes, even now we have our parents, they're taking care of us. But that time, we are not expected to have any kind of responsibility. So beautiful, happy days. Okay, let's move on to the second stanza. Is there a rhyme scheme in the first stanza? Look at it. Is it a rhyme scheme? Go, 11, heaven, geography, B, day. Okay, 11, heaven. Right? So how do we find the rhyme scheme? What letter do we write at the end of the line? A, B, C, and so on. Similar sounding words will have the same letter. 
What is the rhyme scheme of the first stanza? Tell me now. A, B, B, C, C. Geography, B. Why not? A, B, B, C, C, and D. Geography kis kis hath rhyme ho rai? B ke saad na? It is not rhyming with 11 or heaven. Right? So it is here. Was that the day? Which day is he referring to? The day here refers to his loss of childhood. His realization that hell and heaven does not exist. And so he has come to know a big secret that was there. I have discovered it. So I am no longer a child. Okay. Move to the next one. When did my childhood go? Same line repeated. What is the device here? Refrain. What is when did my childhood go? Hanji Kushi, any doubts? Rhyme scheme. And day 11C is behaving so well. Let me tell the online students also. So it's a very good class. See, you know, you should not have that fear, only then you're going to behave. This should be something inherent, you know. Yeah, I, I want to be good. I want to listen. And you have come here to school, you should be thankful. Right? I should be scary. It's nice to hear, you know. B and B. Okay. So, yes, here. Yeah. Please take a look. O, 11, they're not rhyming. So, I've given it a different. Letter 11, heaven arriving. So, see, see, then geography B. Sound when we talk about rhyme, it is not spelling, it is sound. So, see, see, day rhymes with anything here? Yeah? No. So, what is it going to be? Geography. Geography. B. Read this stanza. Read this stanza. Could not be found in geography and therefore could not be. Was that the day? So, day is left alone. The day does not have any. What? That's a key. Is it? Sorry. Okay, fine. Day. Yeah. Okay, I know my ABC. Nice to know you also know it. Okay, so A, B, B, C, C, D. Now look at the second stanza. Aditya is going to tell me the rhyme scheme of the second stanza. Come on, hurry up before I discuss what it is about. Go, not. Be love lovingly day. Be and lovingly. When did my childhood go? A. No rhymes. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Was it the time I realized that adults were not all they seem to be? Right here, there's another what device used. Uh, do you remember in German? Do you remember this? 
Yeah, without any punctuation, you know. Neither for this next line it continues. See, 80 line sounds looks like one line, but it is two lines, isn't it? Right? But without any punctuation, they moved on. Was it the time I realized that adults were not all they seemed to be? So go, not, be, love, lovingly, and day. So there are just two words, right? So right, it is be and lovingly. Be lovingly. So a sound, we talk about sound, not spelling. Geography and be. Lovingly and be. Right? Okay. Yeah. Now, what does the poet talk about in the second line? First of all, yes, what is there? There is a refrain. So I'm doing rhyme scheme so that you know what rhyme scheme is, how you, you know, like find out the rhyme scheme, right? So you will not get a question there that what is the rhyme scheme like that. And when did my childhood go? It's a refrain. What is the quality? Was it the time I realized that adults were not all they seemed to be? They talked of love and preached of love, but did not act so lovingly. What is this quality of humans that made him realize I am not a child? He is able to differentiate between their behavior, right? So he will understands the quality of hypocrisy. What is hypocrisy? Yes. So you act different from what you speak or what you say or what you preach. Okay, so we are there talking about, yeah, bringing about a change, being the so kind and revolutionary and whatnot. But in reality, we are not practicing any of those things. Okay, so hypocrisy. Clear? Yes. What else is there in this paragraph? Was that the day? Can this also be a refrain? Can it be? Was that the day? Was that the day? Yes. When did my childhood go? When did my childhood go? And was that the day? Which day is he talking about? When he understood about human behavior. What did he understand about human behavior? Yes, Kashish? Second stanza, second stanza. What has happened? Yes, the qualities of humans. What is that quality of humans? Hypocrisy. Is it a good quality or a bad quality? Bad quality. Rational thinking is a good quality or a bad quality? Rational thinking is good or bad? Good. When you are able to realize what is right and what is wrong, that's a good quality. Hypocrisy. When you are something, you talk different, you behave different, that is not a nice quality. So the child has been able to recognize and so he thinks, I've been able to distinguish between the good behavior and the bad behavior. So now I think I am no longer a child. When we are children, all these qualities, they never come to our notice. It seems as we are unaware of so many things in the world. Let's come to the next stanza. Now in the third stanza. What are you doing? <laughs> They're saying that and you're listening to them? Are you a child? <laughs> oh yeah, we're all children from heart. Okay, silence now. Who are you listening to? 
Of course, we can't find it in our cell. We'll not see that innocence on our face. Where will you see that innocence? It went to some forgotten place. Definitely our childhood is there. Why is it forgotten? Because of our burdens, worries, because of uh, the wisdom that we have acquired, because of the experiences. But I want to find my childhood. I want to see what childhood looks like. That's hidden in an infant's face. That's all I know. So when you look at children here, immediately we say, what? You see small kids, right? You see the kindergarten ones and all. Immediately like, oh my, how sweet, how cute, how innocent. And that is what childhood looks like. So in, in an infant's face, we can find childhood. Where is our childhood thought? We don't know. But we can definitely bring the child out again. It's not lost. It's somewhere hidden. It's buried deep within us. So last he says, where did my childhood go? Right? And uh, yes, here. Yeah. So he is looking for innocence and the infant's face reflects that. Yes. And uh, yes, of course, our childhood, what has happened to it? It's buried and it is forgotten with the passage of time. So the questions here, which are asked again and again here. When did it go? Where did it go? What do we call them? We call these questions rhetoric, or rhetorical questions. Okay. Uh, any doubts, any question?